Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're looking over the Tough Gaming Z790 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard from ASUS. What we're going to do is do an overview of the actual motherboard, all the bits and pieces on it. We've got a screwdriver to check what's underneath some of those covers. And of course, we're going to have a look at the I.O. for you to make a decision if this motherboard is right for you. The main standouts here is that it's an LGA 1700 motherboard. It has a PCIe 5.0 slot. It also is a DDR5 and it is up to 7,800 mega transfers. That's with overclock. And of course, this means you have a lot of flexibility with the DDR5 sticks that you use. So let's get it open and have a bit of a look. At the top here, we have the Wi-Fi antenna. And what's interesting about this is, well, it is magnetic. And of course, it can pop out a little bit so you can stick it on the side of your case. However, you can't really replace this because these plugs here look proprietary. Compared to other brands of Wi-Fi antennas, you can actually just screw those on. You can potentially get an extension cable. This is proprietary and only for this motherboard or ASUS potentially. So that's a bit of a bummer. Underneath the motherboard, we have some SATA cables. We have a little sticky bit. There's a couple of these. We have screws for the M.2 drive. We've got some instructions and we have stickers. And lastly, which is kind of surprising, we do have a disc with the, not update drivers, but drivers. Now let's start from the top. It has a very nice and thick coolers all over on this area here. And of course we do have our M.2 drive slot. So let's open that up. There are two screws on the side and it pops out really nicely. And those stickers that we saw are probably for this thing right here. And we have some cooling material here that you can take off when you put your M.2 drive. So it can be passively cooled by this thing right here. The screws don't fall out, which is nice. Now, luckily, what I'm really happy about is this right here is a plastic clip, not a screw. The screws that are in the packet, you can actually use to shorten this if you have a smaller version. They can be up to this size, which are used actually in the ROG Ally. So let's take a look at the IO. This is a HDMI, it's 2.1 up to 4K 60 Hertz, depending on what CPU you have installed. We've got a USB-C right here with up to 10 gig transfers, a display port, which is also 4K at 60, but it's only 1.4 version. We've got USB and these ones right here are all 5 gig. And then we have a 10 gig speed right here, the little color changes. And we have a 2.5 gig ethernet port and another USB-C port. This is really good to see that there's two. I for one, I am running short on USB-C ports. As mentioned, here's the Wi-Fi ports that plug in, well, they're proprietary, so they pop right in. It's nice, you don't have to screw it in, but it also means that you can't use a different antenna if this breaks or you lose it. We have our optical audio. I don't think many people use it, but let me know in the comments if you do. And we've also got our audios. Now, if we follow this little area right here, you can see a yellow line that separates this part of the PCB. This is actually the audio chip right here, the audio driver. And this means that the audio area is separated from the other components on your motherboard, reducing any interference that comes from it. This is really great to see. Well done, Asus. I love this feature and I think it should be on every motherboard. Let's jump back to here. We've got another section of M.2. And again, this has two screws that stay into the actual passive cooler right here, which means they won't get lost. And we have now a total of four M.2 drives. Really good, one, two, three, and four. Now onto the most unique feature of this motherboard, and that is the button right here. As I press it, the clip pops off and reduces the stress in trying to take out and put in a graphics card into the PCIe 5 slot. On top here, we have our CPU slot. Let's pop this off and put in an Intel CPU to see how it looks. For this example, we have the Intel Core i7-1400K, uh, the 700 version, and we can pop that onto our motherboard. As always, make sure you point it the right way. And in this case, it should be quite simple as the corners up here have little gaps that can fit right in there. Once you push this down and pop this on, the plastic will pop off 
and allow you to take that off. Now onto the RAM slots here, we've got four and they are color coded. You always want to grab the furthest slot away from the CPU. So if you've got one RAM stick, put it in this last one right here. If you've got two, you will match the colors here, which will be BB or AA. Your next two will go into the black ones. But most of the time from testing, I have noted that two sticks at the highest mega transfers will be better than four unless you're doing some very, very specific workloads. Speaking of interesting workloads, we have ourselves two eight pin plugs right here with a total of 16. This means the power stages are each rated to handle up to 60 amperes and it combines high side and low side MOSFETs and drives into a single package to deliver power efficiency and a stable performance. But again, it is for very specific workloads, especially if you're overclocking, this will be great. But for most people, uh, you probably won't make the most of this. So you may be better off going for a cheaper motherboard unless you plan on overclocking your CPU. At least the cooling section here will be able to handle it. It's really large and it has a lot of air slip fins. Now the PCB is a six layer PCB, which means some of those little printed circuits are actually on different layers and it is said to help with heat dissipation. Uh, it's hard to test because we don't actually measure the heat of the plastic, but it does mean that there won't or there shouldn't be much bending to the actual PCB over time. Let's have a look at the back. We don't have a lot of things sticking out, which is really nice. And you can see that section for the audios nicely separated from the rest of the system. Obviously there is a joint here because it needs to connect to your motherboard, but at least a lot of it here is cordoned off. For SATA and IO plugs, we have a flat 90 degree connector here, but these ones right here have been turned to the side instead of going from the top, which is interesting. And this power plug right here, your 24 pin is upward facing. Uh, I have used actually a 90 degree adapter here to allow the cable to sit nicely, especially in uh, some builds where there's not much clearance around this section and having a cable going around is a little bit annoying. The USB 3 plug right here is actually also very interesting. It is PD 3.0, which means it can do 20 gigabits a second on USB 3 and a power delivery of 30 watts, which is fantastic. It can power all sorts of devices connected to your computer. For plugging in your reset power and HDD light, it's still your standard plug. This box does not come with any special adapter that adapts on top to make it easier to plug. We've got our RGB plugs and headers right here. So one, two, and three, and four right here. This is a four pin, depending on what type of RGB you're using. We've got our chassis fan plug here, and we've got our CPU fan plug right here. One of my favorite things about building new computers is how easy motherboard manufacturers have done to troubleshoot your actual computer as you build. There is a little LED lights right here that says CPU, DRAM, VGA, or boot to let you know what the issue is when you're booting up your computer. Very helpful when, as is tradition with other ASUS devices, the motherboard has built in AI overclocking capabilities. And personally, I have used it often enough to highly recommend it. It's really quick and easy and makes the job of overclocking quite, quite simple and it reduces any stability issues and the need for continually resetting to try and find the sweet spot. The performance gains are modest, and of course it depends on the other hardware you have in your system. It also has AI noise cancellation built in. This is part of the platform to reduce background noises on microphones and incoming audio while preserving the voice. For example, that means things like keyboard clatter, mouse clicks, and other ambient noises, they will be muffled when you're using this motherboard in the systems that it has and supports. This is a software thing. So overall, I would happily recommend this motherboard. It has plenty of M.2 slots and it has a very adequate cooling right here. The button over here makes it a really premium choice for those who use something like this as a test bench, although the price at $609 at PLE isn't really the price you wanna pay for a test bench. The audio section here that's separated from the rest of the PCB is really, really good and it's really nice to see for those people who want perfect audio. Check the links below to where you can buy this at PLE. Big thanks to ASUS for sending this for an overview. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you all in another video overviewing a motherboard like this.